Hello, Void. Well, finally back on watching some better movies, at least. Uh, my last couple have been a little up and down, but today's... we're on a better track. And it's one I've, uh, been hearing some good things for, and finally got around to seeing. Thank you, Dollar Tree, for allowing me to find a copy of Ghost Stories for a dollar. And, yeah, okay. That was decent. Worth more than the dollar I paid for it, that's for sure. Though, not a perfect film by any means. Though, Rotten Tomatoes is definitely a, with a brand of, with its seal of approval. And I can kind of see why, but I also am not entirely certain why. It's kind of, I go back and forth on that, really. So, Ghost Stories. It's a British film, and... Uh, starring uh, Andy Nyman, Paul o. o. Whitehouse, Alex Walter, and Martin Freeman. He's having a lot of fun in this movie, I'll say. Uh, based on a uh, stage play of the same name, that, then, that was uh, done by the same writer-director, so pretty much uh, making a big movie version of their play. And several scenes really show that. There's a lot of sit-down-and-talking moments, and the ending in particular just feels like a curtain call. Not a bad thing, but noticeable. And I will say the uh, American cover here is a little, um, I wouldn't go quite say misleading because uh, this is in the movie, so is this, but it doesn't really do the film flavor justice. There's actually an alternative cover here, which same general tone, but fits the movie a little bit better. Less uh, screaming ghost, more creepy, what is this? Which is really a better way of describing this movie. So, it's hard to go into particulars here, but it's sort of an anthology. Kind of. So, uh, the film mostly follows uh, Andy Nyman's character, Professor Goodman. He's a skeptic. He goes around disproving psychic phenomena, ghosts, whatnot. Ever since a very famous... He was inspired in his youth, and uh, from there is taking after him and uh, trying to disprove people as frauds and whatnot. And he is kind of one of the problems I have with the film. Now, the actor does a very good job with him. But a lot of the times, you have a problem finding him as likable. I get why he's doing what he's doing, but the way he goes about it is asinine. And the film goes out of its way to portray him like that, so I have a feeling we're not entirely supposed to like him. But since we're following him around, it makes it a little difficult. I mean, there are worse man characters I've sat through, but... And the actor is doing a good job at portraying him. But... There are some few issues there. So, he finally meets his mentor, who supposedly had disappeared, who is now no longer a skeptic because of three cases he could not disprove. And so, Professor Goodman goes to look into these three cases, and that's what the next good chunk of the movie is, is three individual ghost stories. Okay. Now, these three individual ghost stories are where this movie is the strongest. All three of them are decently creepy. They have good atmosphere, pretty good pacing within the stories. The sort of wraparound element with him talking to people and getting to the stories a little bit slower in story one and three. Two? Not so much. Two is good. But once the stories themselves get going, we're okay. The first one concerns a night guard at a apparently abandoned sanator uh, then, uh, asylum and his spooky encounter there. Uh, it's, it's your basic ghostly little girl thing going on. Okay. Which is fine, but it just kind of ends. It doesn't really resolve much. And that's kind of the 
feel you get through all three of the ghost stories. I mean, they're creepy, but they just kind of stop without any real resolution. I know that's kind of the point of these are unexplained, but it kind of cuts out right when a normal horror movie would be going into a death scene, but there's no indication that these characters did, did or didn't survive other than the fact that Professor Goodman's talking to them. Second story, however, uh, involves a younger kid, uh, played by Alex Lothar, and this kid is going all out. He is brilliant in this movie as this neurotic mess of a kid who's clearly traumatized and just from a not good home. Now, I wanted to see more of this segment because there's a lot going on and none of it's explained and I am curious. So, this, you can tell something's just off as soon as the professor gets there as uh, the kid just seems nervous about who he is, invites him in and, and tells his parents that he's he'll be upstairs. But the parents are just standing in another room, staring at the wall the entire time, and it's unsettling. He goes upstairs, hears some movement in another room, sees someone dart across, but the kid indicates that, no, it's just us here. While he's talking to the professor before the story starts, you, there's a knock at the door, and uh, the kid yells for his parents to go away, but there's no, no voice. Calls out again. I know you're still there. And then you'll hear just your footsteps walk off. It's, it's unsettling. His story is weird, but creepy because the impression you get because you actually hear his parents talk in his story, and they're very animated people. So the fact that they're just creepily standing around indicates something was wrong here. And pretty much his story is about a car accident he got into where he ran over some sort of cryptid in the woods that it what the monster kind of looked like was a little bit of the weak point but I can see what they're going for it kind of was like a goat man devil creature and there's a lot of like iconography around his room about this thing as he's clearly been studying we're trying to figure out what it was but uh, his car then breaks down and uh, the creature comes after him and he ends up apparently being grabbed by it, and then it, the story just kind of ends with the doc, with Professor Goodman now going and looking at the site that that happened at. I want to know more about what's going on there. That was my favorite part of this movie, was watching the segment. Uh, the third segment uh, involves uh, Martin Freeman as this banker character whose wife is expecting, and uh, while his wife is away giving birth, he starts having some poltergeist activity. Which, again, is a decently creepy go-around. So, those three stories go off pretty well, though I wish for a little bit more resolution. in them. And then this movie gets weird. So, this goes into twist territory, and I'm not going to go into it completely, mostly because I'm still wrapping my head around some of it, but... Essentially, there's a... The movie becomes something of a fever dream, where it starts delving into the professor's past and how he connects with each of these stories, and an incident with a, a death in his own past. And there's been cryptic hints about some of it throughout the movie, particularly with a series of numbers that keep showing up. But... It gets surreal, particularly with them um, occasionally tearing it down the background and moving into a different area, and almost acting like it is a play or a movie for weird parts of it, and it gets a little hard to follow. But you can kind of make out what happens. But there's enough. Pe there's not enough pieces to connect all of part one to part. Then to then, I guess part one I guess would be the him wrap around. Part two would be the stories, and part three is this the twist and reveal. There's not... Uh, then part one and two go hand in hand and connect well. Part three just comes so far out of nowhere that while you can see some strands holding it on there, it doesn't click in completely well. Like, there are some things that kind of do hint towards it a little bit, but not enough for it to fully come out. I mean, there's 
some bit with a man in a jacket, which you do have seen a little bit a few times up until now in each of the other stories, but only just. And this, the route it goes towards at the end, just, you get it, but you don't get how it all meshed together, making a lot of the beginning parts more pointless. So, I see what it's trying to do. It just doesn't do it especially well at the end. So, it was trying to do something more than just your standard horror anthology. It just didn't quite tie the knot on it. I'm still giving this one a three MacGuffins. It's, it's a fun ride. And if you can accept some weird jumps towards the end of it, the three stories alone are at least worth it to see. Even if they don't go as hang out with them as long as they should. The movie's only 98 minutes. If they're given, like, five, ten minutes more per segment, like an extra 15 minutes, I would have been fine. But, uh, otherwise, I give it a watch. It's pretty good. Uh, it was 2017, so it's a fairly recent film. Still should be easy to come by, but, uh, yeah. I'd, uh, give this one a watch. I'm I almost gave it a four, but it just didn't tie together well enough for me. So, three MacGuffins for me, but I still will say it's worth seeing. Alright, I'll see everybody soon.